This is the 16th chapter. And uh, I'm going to read this entire chapter. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restraineth me from bearing. I pray thee, go unto thy... Go unto my maid, and it shall be that I may obtain children by her. Excuse me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How many love the word of the Lord today? Yeah. And Abram hearkened unto the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid of the Egyptian, and Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave to her husband as Abram to be his wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee, I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes, and the Lord judged between me and thee. And Abraham said unto Sarai, Behold thy handmaid, the maid of thy hand, do it as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dwelt heartily with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain of the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself unto her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that thou shalt not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and thou shalt bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, excuse me, Ishmael. <laughs> That's a big mistake. <laughs> should call his name Ishmael. Just got to get these tears out of my eyes so I can read it. <laughs> should call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man in his hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that he seeth me? Wherefore do well, it is called Belorai. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son, which he, Hagar bare Ishmael. And Abraham was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. And the key scripture that's just on my heart today. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her. Thou God seest me. Have I also looked here after him that he seeth me. All I want to say today is God sees. And my heart is full today with that thought. God sees me. God is omnipresent, all-powerful, omnipotent. He is all-seeing. His eye is not dim that it cannot see. He can take a look at the entire universe at one glance. His knowledge and his capacity is so much higher and so much above my own ability and understanding, so much a higher and above everything in this earth. And he is a God that sees. 
There is no God if that God does not have eyes to see. For a blind God is not a God at all. At all. But we are sure of this, that God sees us. We are taught in the scriptures that God is everywhere. And nothing can hinder his sight. Nothing can be done in this universe or in this world that God does not see. At one glance, God can see all things. And he is worthy of our praise today. But if, if anybody here today, suppose that God does not see the place that you're at or the circumstance that you're facing or the things that are going on in your life or you think, well, God's too busy in the world. God's too busy in the universe. God's too busy to be mindful of me, mindful of what's going on. Perhaps he's busy on the other side of the world. Perhaps God is taking rest. It's the Sabbath day, which would be Saturday, but it's Sunday. God's taking rest. He's He's asleep. He's uh, too busy to uh, see me. In Psalm 121, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help, and my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that calleth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. For the Lord shall preserve thee from evil, and he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time and even forevermore. Our help and strength cometh from God, because he sees and knows our plight. We can be sure that God sees us, and remember to know always that he can see everything, even before it happens. Even before the worlds were made, God saw and God knew. If there is an event that transpires, God knows it's going to take place. Even before it takes place, he can see it. It was mentioned in our armored word, God is never surprised. Praise the Lord. God sees and knows all things. There's prophecies that have been given in this book. There's prophecies that have been given to us as a people. He has foreknowledge of all things. I, I believe that God stands at the end and the beginning of time yeah. and can see and knows every and all things. In Isaiah 55, verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall ret not return unto me a void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the way wherein I sent it. Thou, God, seest me. God sees you. God sees you. Lori Tomlinson. God sees you, Sister Betty. God sees you, Sister Megan. God sees me, Thomas. We could put any name under heaven mentioned. Any name represented by somebody in this house, God sees you, Brother Hal. God sees you, Sister Christie. God sees the entirety of your situation. God sees the entirety of your life. Pastor Paul, God sees you. God will keep that which you have committed unto him. God sees you constantly and God sees you supremely. There is never a moment in the day or in the darkest of night that God's eye is not upon each and every one of you. To the prayerful, to the humble man or woman that may be gathered here today, he is our consolation. And God sees you and he sees and he knows this, that if he sees you, he hears your prayer also. Psalm 66 and 19, but verily God hath heard me, and he hath in turn attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. For he has seen me, and he has heard me. To those that are stressed and worried and overcome with many doubts and fears and anxieties and circumstances and situations and despair... 
God sees your care. God sees your trouble. God sees your anxiety. God sees your heartache. And he says, cast your care upon me, for I care for you. To the sick and to the tired who have suffered treatments and medicines and doctors and procedures and struggles and heartaches and sickness and despair, he is touched by your infirmities and by your faith, he will make you whole. In Hebrews 11th chapter, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but it was in all points tempted or we are yet without, his, without sin. Let us therefore boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. God sees, God heals, and God sets free. To the sinner, to the backslidden, for you who may have no regard for the way of the Lord, and you must be, might be fallen from that and be so easily beset by the weight of sin, God sees you. God's mercy sees you, and his kindness is for you. God did not come to condemn, but God came to save. In John 3, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 8, 11, she said, No man, Lord, and Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I don't know if there are any sin in your life today, but Jesus does not, has not come here to condemn you. He says in John, 1 John, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us of our sins. He sees you, he understands, and he is merciful today. No matter the circumstances, no matter the situation, God sees you. Whether you, if you are like Hagar in this situation and have not, had not given any regard to God, had not given any regard to the testimonies or the talkings of Sarai and Abraham, no doubt when in, in their house they spoke about the goodness and the covenant and all the great things that God has done for them, she paid no attention to them, didn't even realize that God was still, had his eye upon her and in her distress, in her uh, frustration and anger and being, being mistreated, she left and there she was all by herself, frustrated and angry and upset. God reached out to her and sent an angel and said, I see you. Amen. You're important to me. Each and every one of us are important to the Lord. Today, he sees us. No matter what we're facing, no matter what is happening, let us hold fast that profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He says today, I didn't make it 20 minutes, but as you'll stand, he says to each and every one of us today, come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Yes. He sees us today. Yes, he does. In the last day, and at the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried and said, If any man thirst, come unto me, and let him drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. God sees you today. Yes. 